It's Wednesday, January the 14th. Lake level's still about the same. It's about, oh, 909 and a half. It's been about the same, you know, within four or five inches for the last three, four weeks. Uh, water temperature, to be honest with you, I haven't been out there in the past week. You know, it's been pretty chilly out. Uh, got a warm front coming in right now. It's supposed to be about 50 something degrees tomorrow. So it looks like I'm gonna get to fish the next three or four days. We've got a tournament coming up this weekend. But uh, the water temperature should be, uh, I know there's some areas it's down below 40, you know, way up in the upper rivers because there's some ice in the backs of the creeks and the, the back of the river arms. But the main lake should be in, the, you know, 46, 47 degrees. So there should be, you know, a lot of the same is what's been going on uh, fishing deep on a, with an ice fishing jig, Rapala ice fishing jig, spoons, grubs, gets it. Also, there should be a, uh, the Alabama rig bite should be getting a little bit better too. Now, what I'm gonna talk about a little bit today where I hadn't been out fishing, I got always got a lot of people asking me what kind of fishing lines I use. So I got four or five different lines. I'm gonna show you uh, what kind I use, when I use them, and maybe a few knots. And also, I mentioned that ice fishing jig a minute ago. I know a lot of guys been having a hard time finding them. I was over there at Sportsman Factory Outlet today in Springfield, and he just got a shipment in a few days ago, and he said they're going pretty fast. But I know Bass Pro Shops have been out of them, so it's been kind of a hard item to find, that 5 8 ounce uh, Rapala ice fishing jig. But you can get them at Sportsman Factory Outlet. But as far as for my fishing line, I'll start out with my spinning line. Now, most of the time, probably 95% of the time, I use monofilament on almost all my spinning rods. I will use uh, fluorocarbon uh, a lot of sometimes in a tournament, but for my day-to-day -day fishing, I prefer monofilament over fluorocarbon. The reason being, I've yet to find a fluorocarbon, and I know they make a lot of fluorocarbons, especially designed for spinning rods, but I've yet to fish with one that every time you cast, it doesn't make that loud slap noise, and I don't, do not like the memory of fluorocarbon on spinning rods, especially in the cold weather. It's like a slinky toy. Uh, like I said, I will use it sometimes in tournaments, you know, where I'm only fishing a day or two with it. But day-to-day -day fishing, uh, you fight the twist and memory in the line a lot more with the fluorocarbon, I think, than what you do with the regular monofilament. And the monofilament I've used for, I've been using this for about 15 years. I've had very little problem with it. It's a Andes Premium Fishing Line. It's a salt, uh, it's a company that makes a lot of salt water line out of Florida. Uh, I get it at Bass Pro Shops or I get it down here at Kimberling at Ozarks Bait and Tackle. But you see, I've got like 1,850 yards of line, a six pound line on this one spool, and it's like $11. It's a really cheap line. The memory on it is really good compared to other lines that I've used. And I find that it's really uh, abrasion resistant. I know fluorocarbon is supposed to be more abrasion re resistant, but I find, especially on light line, if I get nicks in it, I'll break fluorocarbon a lot easier than I will straight monofilament. So. On most all my spinning rods, I use a six or eight pound Andes line. Now, as far as my bait casters, uh, I pretty much, you know, all my crankbaits, jigs, almost everything on a bait caster, I'm usually fishing with fluorocarbon. The only time you don't want to fish with fluorocarbon is if you're throwing a topwater bait because fluorocarbon line sinks. And throwing a topwater bait, you don't want a line that absorbs water. So then I go back to the Andes and I'll go, you know, take 12 to 15 pound Andes for my topwater or buzz bait. But most everything else I use fluorocarbon line. And my number one choice of fluorocarbon is, uh, and now I'm not sponsored by any of these companies, so this is just from my years of experience and what I've had good luck with. Uh, my number line, one line is probably the Sun FC Sniper line. And now it's expensive, you know, this, this here's $25 for about 200 yards. Now I can usually get two reels out of that. But it's, I think it's probably the best fluorocarbon line that I've used. It's, it's limp, it's got low stretch, and the memory is really good. 
Probably before I used a lot of the Sun Sniper line, I used this Trilene 100% fluorocarbon. That would probably be my second choice as far as fluorocarbon. It's it's a lot like the Sun. The thing I've, I've really been impressed with on the Sun line, I find it's a lot stronger. I break off a lot less into rocks and around rougher stuff. Like say my second choice would be the Trilene 100% fluorocarbon. And I do use some Bass Pro XPS fluorocarbon. Now they've got a new one out that I haven't used yet. Uh, a lot of the Bass Pro line or the XPS line is a little bit smaller diameter so you can get by with a little bit heavier line. Uh, but like I say, my number one line is, is the sun on the fluorocarbon. As far as on the braided line, and about the only situations I use braid on is if I'm fishing a frog or Alabama rig. Uh, around here we don't have much grass, so if I was, you know, flipping pads or grass or, or throwing a, a topwater frog or punching, I would be using braid. But around here we don't have that too, too many of those situations. But on my braid, I really like this strand sonic braid. Now what it's got on it, it's a... Uh, it says it's got a glide coat technology and what that is is it's real smooth going through the eyes unlike most braid it's real rough when you reel it in it's got a special coating on the line that uh, helps to come through the guides and it seems to be a lot smoother overall now Luz has come out with a with a new braid as well and I just got some of their braid I haven't tried it yet but it has a coating on it just like the Strand Sonic Braid does. So I'm going to be trying it these next few days on my Alabama rig and see what I think of it. Now a lot of the knots I tie on my spinning gear. You know, I actually looked online to get the right name and terminology of it and I couldn't find it exactly the way I tie this. But I've been tying this knot for over 20 years. And it's basically an improved clinch knot. I just slide the line through the eye of the bait once, put the line in my left hand, tag line over the other side of my finger, and I wrap around about five times. Now I've got a loop there where my finger is. I take the tag line back through there, grab it with my thumb, wet the knot. I got the main line in my left hand, the bait in my right, and the knot will just slide right up. And when you get the knot right, you'll feel it pop or you'll hear it pop in place and usually every time I tie a bait I'll usually pop it once or twice because if you went over your line when you're tying you can actually burn it and get yourself a weak spot so that's why I always pop it now I use that like I say on all my light line gear now if I've got something I'm fishing a little bit heavier Something that's dragging in the rocks quite a little bit. I'll tie a little bit different. It's the same knot, but I just run it through the bait twice. Okay. Now this would be real similar to how you would tie a Palomar knot. Slide it through once, come back through the other way again. I'm going to tie it just like I did that other line on the spinning rod. But this time I'm just going to go three times. And each time I'm wrapping, I'm progressively going down so that I don't cross over the last twist. Slide it back through the loop. Wet it. Now on this knot, I will have three tag lines because I've got the loop and that other line. And when you trim your tag lines, Go ahead and leave yourself just about a sixteenth of an inch or so. Because, you know, that shouldn't slip, but I usually leave just a little bit in case I didn't get the knot pulled up. Now what that's done, it's got the line going through the eye of the bait twice. So I feel like when it's going through rocks, especially on a jig, it's getting a lot of abrasion there. Having it going through there twice gives me a, you know, a little bit extra security that I'm not going to break the line and I usually use this knot on like 12 pound and up and I also use that same knot when I tie my braid uh, you know a Palomar knot is good 
But if a person's not real careful when you tie that Palomar knot, you can get it wrapped over itself and it's prone to break real easy. But those two knots there are what I use probably on 90% of all my baits. So I'll get out and do some fishing next few days and I'll give you a more up-to-date report next Wednesday. So until then, good luck, good fishing.